Welcome this day to a celebration of God's magnificent creation. Welcome this day to a recognition of God's redeeming love. Welcome this day to the joy of God's Holy Spirit of truth and power. Thanks to God, the sustainer who walks with us every day, guiding and guiding our steps. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, our Savior, in response to your call to be your faithful disciples, we are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Open our lives and teach us how to follow your great commission to make disciples of all nations, to baptize and teach them your ways. Let us know the full blessings of our God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer.
So, I don't know about you, but sometimes things in the Bible confuse me. And sometimes when I'm reading my Bible and I read something, I think, what? And so I put a little question mark there, and I say, God, I'm a little confused, but you know what? If you want me to understand it, you're just going to have to explain it to me. And I leave it. And then sometimes the answers come a little later, and some things I'm still a little confused about. <laughs> but that's okay. You know, it's a big book with a lot of stuff in it. So it's okay to be a little confused here and there. Today is Trinity Sunday, and that's something that confuses a lot of people because you're talking about God is one, but there are three people that make up God. You've got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God the Son is not God the Father. God the Father is not the Holy Spirit, but they're all God. And the closest I can come to explaining that is, I'm Carol, and the first thing I was was a daughter, and, and a granddaughter, and a niece. And then I became a friend, and then to some people I'm now mom, and to others I'm grandma. And so I'm the same person, but I have all these different names. It's not exactly like the Trinity, but it kind of gives you an idea. I think if you think too hard about the Trinity, the smoke will start coming out of your ears. <laughs> your eyes will start going around in circles. But there's one thing in the Bible that I am completely unconfused about, and that is God is love. And I think that we don't need to spend our time worrying because we don't understand some things. Work on the things we do understand. I know that God is love. He created a beautiful world. He sent his son Jesus to earth to teach us about love, to show us by his life here. And then when Jesus was gone from this earth, he sent the Holy Spirit to be in our hearts to help us to love others and to love him. And that's what's really important, that we know God loves us. He wants us to love him. He wants us to love each other. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you. We thank you for the confusing things, and we thank you for the things we don't worry about at all. We know you love us. We understand that. And we thank you that you have taught us how to love others and that your spirit makes us strong to reach out to others and share your love with them. Help us as we go out from this place to say loving words, do loving things, that we might honor you in everything we do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, beginning with the 15th verse. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will send another companion who will be with you forever. This companion is the Spirit of Truth 
whom the world can't receive because it neither sees him nor recognizes him. You know him because he lives with you and will be with you. I won't leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live too. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. I have spoken these things to you while I am with you. The companion, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I told you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Okay, last week was Pentecost. Today is Trinity Sunday. While it's an important day in the liturgical calendar, we don't have cake like we did last week. I'm sorry. The Trinity can be a difficult concept to understand. Like Carol was saying, one God and the three persons of God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And there are so many analogies out there that people have tried to use to explain this concept, but none of them really do work. And that is because our God is such an awesome God that there is no way for us to adequately express God completely. Okay, but the one that Carol used is the one I was going to use (laughs) that makes most sense. So, how many of you have ever been a son or a daughter? All right, that's most of us, okay. All right. How many of you have been a sibling? A sibling, okay. How many of you have been an employee? And last one, how many of you have been a neighbor? All right, yes. So we can be someone's child, someone's sibling, someone's employee, someone's neighbor, and we're still the same person. God in three persons of the Trinity is the same, but experienced differently. And I know that that is not an accurate explanation, but it gives us an idea of the vastness, the complexity, the wonder of God in three persons. Sue Lodge says it this way, whatever we can say about God is so approximate and limited. She suggests that we refer back to the latter in the councils concept that the nature of God is incomprehensible and the best we can do is that approximation and metaphor. However, it is important that we think about the nature of God, and how it impacts our relationship to God, our relationship to other people, and to the entire world. On this Trinity Sunday, we are beginning our new worship series, God With Us. And I know sometimes it's difficult to remember and to truly comprehend the idea that God is with us, always. Our scripture for today tries to help us understand this idea. Jesus is preparing his disciples for when he is leaving. And he tells them, I will ask the Father, 
and he will send another companion who will be with you forever. First, let's examine Jesus telling the disciples his father will send another companion. That's how the Common English Bible translates it. But it can also be translated, this companion can be translated as advocate, protector, teacher, or guide. The Greek origin of the word is parakatosis. All right, that's a hard word for scholars to find an accurate translation, and I probably said it incorrectly. We use it and say the word paraclete. Okay, and that word paraclete is only used five times in Scripture, and each time it's used to describe the Holy Spirit. And ideally, then, its uniqueness. The uniqueness of that word paraclete will help us remind us of this complexity of the Holy Spirit. Okay, and then Jesus also says another, another companion, another paraclete. That's indicating that Jesus was also our paraclete. Jesus is revealing this connection this relationship of the three persons of the Trinity. Jamie Clark Souls explains that what appeared to be bad news for the disciples, Jesus leaving them, turned out to be the best news for them and for us. When Jesus walked on the earth, his ministry was limited to his locale and his person what was right around him. But when he departed, his disciples were given the Spirit. And this happens not just to those first disciples, but to all of us who have come later, who never were able to see the historical Jesus. God is with us in that same way, with that same availability, with the same love, as Jesus Christ had for those first disciples. So I know all of this can be really confusing. The concept of the Trinity is confusing. Again, that's because God is just so awesome that there is no way we can express all of the aspects of God with our limited human vocabulary, vocabulary and understanding. But what I want to stay focused on in our worship series today is God with us. How do we experience that? How do we know that God is with us? Friends, it's all about love. Are you surprised that I brought it back to love? I think I've spoken a lot of my messages about love. Because that's the foundation that is the essence of who God is. Love. God in all three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, are all about love. Our scripture today begins with love. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Okay, now what are those commandments? Again, Jamie Clark Souls explains that unlike Matthew, nowhere in John does Jesus command us to go that second mile, to turn the other cheek, to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Instead, Jesus gives only a single commandment in John. And it occurs in the chapter right before this one that we are looking at today. And he says, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. 
He reiterates this in the chapter then just after ours. This is my commandment, that you have loved one another as I have loved. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Ashley Rosser writes that Jesus explains to disciples that after he is no longer physically with his followers, the Spirit would walk with them and guide them in the same way Jesus walked with and guided them. The Spirit would be with the followers as Jesus was with them. See, it was as if Jesus knew that his disciples needed some assistance in living into this life of love as he, the embodiment of love, lived. Therefore, we were all given the Spirit who would be with us forever. The Spirit was with them and within them. The Spirit was helping them and is helping us to love as Jesus did. Jesus loved by feeding the hungry by healing the sick, by welcoming the outcast, by caring for the marginalized. And the Spirit is with us. The Spirit is within us as we continue to do the work that Jesus did. God is with us, enabling us in ways that we never imagined, in ways that sometimes may seem beyond our capability. God is with us when we help out our neighbor who is struggling to care for themselves. God is with us when we share some of our gifts with those who are in need. God is with us when we let our children know that they are loved, unique, and cherished for who they are, just as they are. God is with the church when we welcome all God's children and show everyone hospitality. God is with the church when we are advocates for justice and equality. And there are so many opportunities to express God's love. You know, with so much pain and suffering in the world, with so much division and animosity, we have numerous opportunities to share love and thereby experience in a powerful way God with us. Every time we act in love, whether it's as individuals or as a body of faith, God is with us. As most of you know, this is a time of transition in our house. And as a mom, I have been filled with emotions as David graduates and begins his college journey. And I want to share with you two ways I've seen God with us in a little over a week. At David's graduation, there was a student there that was wheelchair bound and nonverbal. She had been a part of their community her whole life. And her special needs certainly made her special to so many. And when it came time for her to get her diploma, all of the people that were up on the stage came down off the stage because they didn't have a ramp. They came down off the stage to celebrate and greet her, just her. And when her name was called, the entire auditorium erupted in applause and cheers. 
It was as if that auditorium exploded in love. And so while that was a secular event, God was there with us. And I have to share this too. Yesterday, David and I attended his summer orientation at Shenandoah. Just to let you know, Shenandoah is a United Methodist University. We see reports from its president every year at annual conference. And our denomination has a long history of supporting this school financially. So while there was some explanation of the religious life activities that are offered at this school, there was no direct reference to God yesterday in the orientation. But in listening to the president of the university and listening to the provost and all of the other staff and students that were involved in those presentations, I knew that God was with us yesterday. God had been part of developing and growing that school, of guiding the leadership in their vision and their priorities. God was with all of those who had gone before and who had prepared a place for those incoming students to accept them and welcome them without hesitation or reservation, just as they are. And I felt the love, the care, the patience that they all share as the Shenandoah family. And God was with me to give me peace. And sitting on my oldest into the world. We don't have to be in the sanctuary for God to be with us. God is with us in it all and through it all. We have a constant barrage of tragedy on the news every night. But you know, I am still amazed how often in those times of tragedy that we see love expressed. Ways that we can see that God is with us even when tragedy strikes, even when bad things happen because there is love. Because Jesus asked his father to send another companion who will be with us forever. This week, I encourage you to be alert for those expressions of love in your personal lives, in our community, in the news, wherever you can find it. And when you see love, Thank God for being with us through it all and in it all forever. Amen.